Mom's away. All right. Hey, everybody. Mom's Thanks away. Thanks for joining us for this uh, media availability with Tim Hardaway Jr. of the Dallas Mavericks. Tim, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and get right to questions. Tim, the camera's just right above the monitor. Cool. All right. Um, Skylar, I'm going to ask you to unmute to get us started. Tim, welcome to the new season after the short off season. <laughs> Thank you. After uh, making the playoffs, ending a, a little stretch without the Mavs being in the playoffs, what do you see as next steps for this team? Uh, I think the next steps is um, just to continue what we've been doing, you know, uh, the previous season and uh, and more. Uh, I know this season coming up, we're definitely uh, focusing more on the other side of the uh, of the ball on, on defense, and and um, that's Coach uh, RC's mindset heading into the season. So. Um, he did say, you know, defense travels, and uh, if we can uh, definitely uh, start focusing more on that end of the floor, knowing that you know we can score with anybody and with the best of them, um, we put ourselves in a great position to uh, go further into the playoffs. And, and along those same lines, with that next steps idea, what do you see as those for Luca? Uh, no, Luca's just got to continue doing what he's doing. Um, he's our floor general, you know. Uh, there's nothing much uh, to be said, you know, about his play. Uh, you know, he's going to carry this team, and we all know that. Uh, it's on our, it's our job, you know, as his teammates, you know, to make his job a lot easier out there on the floor. Okay, Brad. Hey, Tim. Uh, good to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, what, uh, you know, you, you guys uh, added some players uh, last week, in the past couple of weeks, and, and some of them you played against. Mm -hmm. What is your kind of takeaway about uh, what those additions might mean to you guys on the floor? Um, you know, you know, I just want to say thanks, you know, to the guys that left. You know, we everybody built a great relationship with those guys. Uh, Courtney, uh, you know, Jay Jack, Seth, uh, uh, you name them, uh, Deline, you know, you name them. Uh, those guys uh, definitely uh, played a, a valid role in. Uh, and us getting back into the playoffs and putting this franchise back on the playoffs in the playoff picture. So, uh, thanks to those guys and those relationships will never be forgotten. Uh, but the new guys that came in, uh, you know, they're, they're hungry. They're hungry. They're excited. Uh, Jay Rich and and uh, James, uh, I've I've known them for a while now, and just being off season back at home in Miami and them playing for Miami Heat, you know, playing against those guys at open gym, open runs previous years. Um, those guys, you know, they're they're talented ball players, not only on offensive end, but definitely on defensive end. And um, they're going to bring that tenacity and that fire and that drive that we're, that we're definitely going to need um, moving forward. Um, and same goes for Wes and the, and the young fellas. And um, just make sure those guys uh, just stay locked in and um, play a valid role for our uh, ball club. Appreciate it. Thank you. No doubt. Uh, yes, hey Tim, I was doing something on sneakers that uh, players wear. Of what went into your line of thinking when you decided which sneaker company to go with, and how many pairs of sneakers do you think you wear during the course of the season? Um, well, just to answer the first part of the question, uh, I think it was a no-brainer uh, for me, you know, to go to the Jumpman brand. Uh, it's just a a classy uh, 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 brand and. It's only a select few that get that honor and that opportunity, you know, to you know put on that Jumpman uh, a logo and represent it to the best of your abilities. So you know, it's just an honor and privilege uh, just to be able to to do that. And um, I would say throughout the course of the season, um, I try not to. I mean, I try not to wear the same shoes probably no more than four or five times uh, in a game, just because it's so much, you know, pounding and so much. Uh, 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 break down into the shoe because you know you're playing so many minutes and then you're practicing in them and then traveling with them so um, just try to make sure I, I play uh, with, a, with a fresh pair and you know it, I mean it feels good to go out there and have that that ability you know to put on fresh sneakers you know every every game and, and having that opportunity to do so so uh, just a just a privilege and an honor. I know your dad was a Nike uh, athlete. How much influence do you have on you as far as you stand with the Nike brand? Um, 
it was a it was a hard you know at first I was with uh, Michigan and Michigan was Adidas at the time when I was in school so uh, just going into the league uh, still having that relationship with the three stripes uh, I just continued on with that uh, in my rookie year and the next three years after that um, and then it, it was just you no know, it was just time for me you know I wanted to go back to the roots and where my where my pops was and how he uh and what he played in and Nike and and Jordan and you know all that type of family here and there I mean it's a, they're different they're really different and um uh so don't say the Nike brand let's say the Jumpman brand from here on out Okay who Hey Tim how you doing uh you know you talk about how the whole concept defense travels and that's where you guys have to get better at Yeah uh how how does that translate? What, what what does that look like to us as we're watching you compared to what we've seen in the past? And everybody talks about it. Yeah. But obviously, it's a movie. What what how, how do we how do we see what you guys are trying to accomplish in that area? I mean, uh, uh, it's just going to just making it as hard as possible for the offense of you know the team the other team to score and. And uh, just doing it on a consistent basis, um, and that starts in training camp, laying that groundwork down, and having the the, the new group of guys out there definitely knowing um, what we have to do, and everybody being on the same page out there, er make sure everybody's on the string. Um, also, communication. Communication is definitely key while that's uh, while uh, you're on that end of the floor, and um, as long as you keep those those. Uh, Things all on the same on the same page. Uh, uh, everything should fall into place, but you have to have that edge. You have to have that desire and that want, you know, to do so. Okay, um, Eddie. Yeah, I'm, uh, Tim. Good to see you again. I'm uh, wondering down in the bubble, you guys got a taste of it playing uh, without any, any fans around, but now you're going to be in ginormous arenas, and, and uh, at least for the moment, it looks like there probably won't be any fans. How weird is that, and does it take some getting used to? Uh, I think it'll be, uh, I mean, we'll be playing in arenas now, so it'll be definitely uh, very different uh, So, uh, uh, in that sense, but I think uh, just playing in the bubble definitely uh, gave that third of the NBA, you know, a little bit of an edge, just knowing how how everything was was uh, played out and how everything was going. Um, but for the most part, um, at the end of the day, it's basketball. So it doesn't matter what venue, where you play at, you, I mean, you could treat it as open gym. I mean, open gym, you play in empty, empty gyms, empty, um, empty uh, spaces with no fans anyway. So, uh, if you just have that type of mindset uh, going into it, uh, you'll be able to to manage and be able to uh, succeed. Thanks. No problem. Okay, Jack. Hey, Tim. How did you go about training uh, and get ready for this season with like, obvious obstacles of the pandemic, the short off season, and like not even knowing when the season would actually restart? Um, just. You no, know, after the season, just took a week and a half, two weeks off, and uh, got right back into it, uh, making sure that my diet was very, very strict, and I, I didn't get lazy on that, and uh, just staying in the weight room and and staying up on conditioning every day. Um, um, it it was it was hard not knowing, you know, when you were able, when you're actually going to be able to to go back dealing with the CBA and all that stuff and et cetera. But, um, you know, if you're out there playing and, and making sure your body's in shape, you know, you don't have to get ready. You're already ready. So uh, that's the mindset I had, you know, going into this off season. And, and um, you know, I'm happy just uh, being in good shape and ready to get uh, this training camp going. Yes. Hey, Tim. How are you? Thanks for your time again. Um, wanted to ask you about um, how you feel the Mavs are positioned going into this year in terms of 
the Western Conference and being up there competing with the elite teams and continuing to just move up the standings. Yeah, I mean, this is what you live for, you know, uh, you know, you know, growing up and and um, and you know, fulfilling your dream of playing the NBA. Uh, you know, you're you're now you're getting to play on on, on the, under the bright lights. Um, it's it, it's terrible that there's no fans, you know, that's able to attend, but. You know, playing on primetime television, you know, especially the first two games of the season, uh, right there it shows that, you know, we're up there with the elite and we have to go out there and perform as an elite team. And um, everybody talks about trying to get there and now we're finally there. And, and um, you just got to embrace the moment. You got to embrace this time and never take it for granted. Um, so just being able to be in that position, um, it, it's amazing and it's a blessing. Okay, we have three more. Tim McMahon. Hey, Tim. Hey. Um, you know, th there are some scores who seem really well suited to that sixth man role. You were the opposite, and that once you got back in the starting role, you, you know, you were much more efficient, much more effective. What is it about starting that that you know you seem to be so much more comfortable in that role? Um, I think it started with. Uh, just being in Atlanta, uh, when I was in Atlanta, my first starting uh, game, my first game that I started uh, my second year there was uh, actually against the Mavericks here in Dallas when uh, Kyle Korver got traded um, so, to uh, Cleveland. So um, that right then and there, that just gave me that confidence and that that feeling that, hey, I mean, I, I feel like I've worked my tail off just to get to this starting position. and. And I wanted to stay there, so um, I mean, I, it just feels right. Um, I mean, you know, you could, but at the end of the day, you can't take it for granted because you go, you could lose at any given moment. So just continue to work, work very, very hard. You know, just to stay in that position and um, um, having that knowing in the back of your mind that um, everything is not guaranteed. Uh, it really just keeps you on your toes and keeps you humble. Hey, Tim, man, congratulations on everything and glad to see you back. Thank you. Um, I know you mentioned the primetime games, and how exciting is it to play on Christmas Day versus the Philly champions? And then a follow-up question, with the next gen generation of gaming, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, NBA 2K looks crazy, mm -hmm. it looks realistic. Have you seen yourself on the game, and what do you think about that? Mm. So, I mean, just being able to, you know, play against the defending champs um, on Christmas Day, that's – that's that's an that's an awesome and uh, awesome feeling. Uh, like I said, you grow up for these moments, and like you say, you can't take anything for granted. So, uh, just being able to play against those guys is an honor. And you know, we're gonna go out there and 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 do our best and try to come out with a win, um, especially on Christmas Day, prime time game. Everybody, the whole world's watching. Uh, that's what you live for. Um, and for PS5, Xbox. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really play video games. I don't play video games. When I was a kid, I was always outside. I was always outside playing with my friends and going to the park or, you know, you know, at school, doing after school activities and stuff like that. So I wasn't really a big stay in the house playing video games type dude. But uh, I have seen graphics and I have seen the difference between the two. Uh, uh, you know, PS5 is, uh, is looking really, really nice. I was, but when I was a kid, I did have Xbox. I had Xbox uh, all the whole entire time. The only time I had PlayStation was when my dad was on the cover of Live 98. That's the only time I had PlayStation. Okay. All right, Valencia, take us home, please. All right, hey, Tim, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I've heard you mention this twice in this press already, saying this is what you dream of, and saying, you know, playing on Christmas Day is something you've always wanted to do, and you know, it's just a, a highlight moment. So if you could attribute three things that have gotten you to this point in your career today, what would those three things be? Uh, sacrifice, uh, sacrifice is definitely one of them. Um, keeping a close niche uh, circle group, however you want to call it, and um, and uh, just having that passion, having that passion, that drive, and that you know that energy, you know, to go out there and compete at the highest level. I keep on saying it, and it's, uh, but you can't take anything for granted, you know, at this point in your career, and and 
all the hard work and sacrifice and everything you put into getting here. So, uh, like I said, it's a blessing, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and um, I'm just happy to be able to play back into play back on a on a Christmas Day game. You know, I've played in previous games with the Knicks, um, so it's a uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be different, but it's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be fun.